Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Pytalista with one more video. Today I'm going to talk about uh, variables in bundles. It's, it's very useful if you are working to environments and then, and not all environments are the same. Sometimes you want to do things in dev that you don't want to do in prod. Your code itself should be exactly the same, but as far as infrastructure, there can be a bit different. I'll just give you one example. Let's say usually in dev, you would have like a cluster, like a shared cluster that more developers are using. And they don't want to have a job cluster every time that you run your pipeline. So that's why you would want to have a shared cluster in dev. But in prod, you would have a job cluster because that job has got a schedule on it. And then you want to pay less because it's more data. It's more work. It's a bigger workload. So. And then variables are a good way to accept those things. And another thing that I'm going to teach you here on top of variables is how to override the configuration on your target that you wanted to change. And then you understand when you see it. So let's get started. So I'm not going to get into the detail of what a bundle is. If you wanted to know more about it, I've done uh, three videos about asset bundle. I have like a basic one that explains how to authenticate, how to do your first bundle. And then I did one on how to do a Python wheel in a bundle, like a Python package. And then lastly, I did a how to integrate that with GitHub Actions, which is would be very uh, useful for you to automate your process. But today I'm going to give you an advanced topic, which is variables in data asset bundles. So I'm just going to start from scratch and then I'm going to clean and just do the change that I need for this example. So first, I want to check my profiles here. So I've already done that configuration. So I have a configuration for a dev and a uh, configuration for a prod environment. I have two separate workspaces, one for dev and one for prod. If you see here, I have it open. So I have, this is my dev environment, and then this is my prod environment. So I wanted to set, deploy my bundle in those two environments, okay? So and I've already set up the personal access token to grant permission for the token deploying my bundle to have all the permissions there. So if you want to know more about those configurations, watch my first video about bundles. So, so what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to create the bundle using Databricks bundle init. So that's create like a boilerplate and I'm just going to use a default Python one and I'm just going to call it demo for the lack of a better name. And I'm don't, I don't wanted to just have a notebook example and I don't want to have uh, Delta and also I don't want to have Python packages. So, so the bundle was created here. So let's do a cleanup uh, in the configuration. So first off, let's get rid of the, all those comments here. Uh, targets, I do want to have a dev called dev, and that's my default uh, workspace. I'm not going to have a staging one, but I do want to have a prod. And the mode is production, which means that uh, all my schedules will be there in production. We'll see how it works. So what I'm going to change here, I'm going to replace that with the my production. Let's copy and paste. And everything else is the same. So let's now just deploy as it is to my dev environment. Let's just validate this bundle. The bundle is validated. OK, so let's deploy this bundle. So deployment is complete. So if I go here, I have, oh, that's prod. Let's go to dev. So I have my job here deployed to dev. And as a default, uh, the, the schedule is paused. Um, and then I have here uh, my job notification, this uh, job analytics email. So let's say that I want to create a variable. So to create a variable, let's go to the documentation. I go here. I can just copy that thing and paste here. So the variable name is going to be notification email. 
and then the description is optional i don't want to have it so the default is going to be let's say i wanted the default to be let's say this one uh john analytics email and the type is optional in this case it's going to be a default one there is a complex one that i'm not going to go into this video and the lookup i'm just gonna do that later to see how it works uh, but for this case i wanted to hard code this and and then i can use the variable let's say on my notification instead of putting this i can just use the dollar notification email and i need to use the var dot and then that should work if i validate this it's gonna be okay so let's change one thing here because i'm not in amsterdam i'm in australia So let's validate this. Value is okay. Right. But let's say that in uh, the default is this one, but in my dev environment, I wanted to have a different email. Let's say my personal email for, for some reason. And then I can put like variables, notification email, and then I just gonna put my just my personal. And then I can validate that. So if I do that and then deploy in dev again, let's refresh. So notification email. Yeah, it's my Peter CJ. So for prods, because I, I didn't say anything here, that's going to use the default, which is that one. So if I deploy that to prod, yeah, demo job here, it's scheduled because the mode is production. And you see that it's at 5 a.m. ETC plus 9 and 30, add light. And then the job notification is this one. So that's variables. But let's say I have the demo job here. I'm using a job cluster. Um, but I, in dev, as I said, I have a, like a share cluster that I use for development. So, and then I want to that cluster to be in dev and in the prod, I want to use the job cluster. How I do this? First, let's create a variable. Then in jobs, one interesting thing is if I have a job cluster key and at the same time I have a existing cluster ID, which is um, var shared cluster, this one is going to override. So if I validate this, this is going to pass. So and then this one, this guy is gonna win. So if I deploy, if I deploy to dev, let's see what's gonna happen. That's going to be um, my job cluster, all right? So it overrides. But make, to, make, to make it happen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that here, which is job cluster keys, job cluster. I'm going to go to data breaks in prod. I can override my resources here and the way i do is this and then i put resources and then i put that's exactly it so uh, instead of using existing cluster id i'm just gonna use job cluster key and the job cluster key I get from the, the job which is job cluster and the cluster is gonna be this one it's a bit confusing but I think you got it and let's change that to a bit smaller and to the 14 which to be compatible with the other one that I had so let's validate this and then say 
Okay. So what's going to happen here is for prod, it's going to be the job cluster. But for dev, is going to be the default, which is the existing cluster ID, which is that one that I pass. Let's test. So let's deploy to dev first. It's going to change to my existing shared cluster. Let's refresh this. So you see that's my Pedro Analytics cluster. But for my prod, let's deploy to prod. It should be the job cluster. Job cluster. So I hope you liked the video uh, so far. Uh, that was my first go, but that's another thing that I'd like to do, which is, as I said in the documentation, you can look up an existing resource in by using this lookup thing. So let's see the example that they have here. Yeah, the lookup, object type and object name. So in, ter in terms of a cluster, let's put a lookup cluster. So lookup. Uh, I think it's right underneath the description or the default. And that one is indented. Yeah. So, but the name of the cluster is different. So let's see if it, this works. So that's the cluster name. Let's see if it works. So let's validate. So let's deploy. The advantage of using this is that, let's say if I destroy this cluster and create a new one, and that cluster ID changes, and then if I keep the same name, and there is not a different name, as long as the name of the cluster is exactly the same, I can destroy and create a new cluster, and then the, the, the devil is still going to be able to deploy. All right, so I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you liked the video, give a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe and click the bell. And thanks for watching. See you next time.